Yachty, and I fuck with you, but I, I gotta agree with this fan. DJ Academics believes Drake does not currently need Lil Yachty as a friend. Instead, the Toronto rapper should have a delusional friend that would support him in any situation. Welcome back, it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. If I'm Drake, I need a delusional friend with me. He responded to Yachty's discussion of the conflict on his podcast A Safe Space by saying that he respects both Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I need a friend that year I'm mad drunk in the club with him With an I'm stumbling all over the place and I stepped on somebody's foot by mistake But then that person shoves me and rather than Trina figure it out like Oh, actually you stepped on his foot first My delusional friend just comes over my shoulder with a punch Why the FK you touching act? We can talk about the other ST later my NA I need my delusional friends right now that's what we need. I might keep it a bean. Drake needs one of those. Where is Drake street nigga friend? Yo, Drake, you gotta start making some new street nigga friends, bro. From there, academics argue Drake needs to start making some new friends. On his hate tune Euphoria, Kendrick Lamar actually mentions Yachty by name, accusing him of ghostwriting Drake's lyrics. He expressed his displeasure with the mention on his program. Furthermore, he made it clear that although many people had praised him for being brought up by Rick Ross and K-Dot who were also at odds with the boy he didn't want to be involved in it. Oh, I don't think it's serious until it's serious. I don't think it's serious. The Atlanta musician described it as a cool thing to watch that taught him a lot and expressed his respect for both Kendrick and Drizzy. He did not say which track or post it was, though there was a strong indication that it was Euphoria. I haven't spoken to Kendrick. Bro, these niggas rich as fuck. It is an intriguing disclosure or claim that he was aware that one or more of these musicians had addressed him prior to the release of their music. Lil Yachty finally declared that the conflict was not serious. In addition, he stated that the two adversaries' wealth and distance from one another will prevent things from getting serious. There were also some opinions that, prior to the fight even starting, people had already chosen Kendrick Lamar over Drake. Drake was deemed a loser in this battle before it started, he believes. Because people don't like him, and haven't, and he's won for a very long time. And he sat at the top of the throne honestly, respectfully. I think he still sits on top of the throne, Lil Yachty expressed. I think that even if opinionated masses would say that Kendrick won, I don't think that people are going to stop listening to Drake and Drake's career is going to flush, you know. I said to Drake, I told him, I don't feel like you won or lost, Lil Yachty concluded. Rappers have lost and then lost everything. I think Drake will still be in everyone's rap Spotify at the end of the year at the top. He can still drop hits and it will still control the summer. I think that Kendrick made very smart moves, and I don't think Drake would disagree. Now, all this shit they saying can't be true. Rap fights are not new to T.I. when the Atlanta rapper was at odds with Shoddy Low. He traveled to Lowe's neighborhood to film the music video for the diss track What Up? What's happening? He is capable of showing contempt. Nevertheless, T.I. is not happy with how the Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar match transpired. I did most listening for the, uh, the double entendres. Yeah. In a recent appearance on Big Boy TV, he talked about the aftermath of the conflict and claimed that some other rappers who attempted to drop in 2024 have suffered as a result. Quadruple entendre in the metaphor, skill in which they present their art. Rappers lying was something T.I. didn't give a damn about, to put it plainly. To him, it was just another aspect of the game. He admitted to the radio host that his attention is drawn to the writing and wordplay. Yeah. Hey, Lord, I think, um, I think it's good for the game. The legend from Atlanta expressed less optimism about the impact the conflict has had on other artists. He made the the point that, in terms of hip-hop, Drake and Dot drank up all the oxygen, thus drowning out everything else. They done kinda fucked it up for some other people who were planning to drop. T.I. also discussed J. Cole's choice to stay out of the fight with Big Boy. T.I. was cordial, despite the rapper receiving criticism from other industry veterans for caving in. I feel like he chose peace and tranquility, he noted. You got to have thick skin we don't know where that would take him. That was quite mature of him. Recently, there has been a desire for people to hear from Joe Budden. All things considered, this is a result of the ongoing fight between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Budden has emerged as one of the most adored cultural critics. Even though he might be irritating at times, listening to him express his opinions is always amusing. Fans are especially interested in learning about his opinions on the Kendrick Lamar fight because he has previously been a harsh critic of Drake. Following Kendrick's release of Not Like Us on SETI, Budden joined DJ Academics on a live stream. He asserted that Drizzy was currently losing at this point. Although Drake did not give us a timestamp record, he thought that it was vital. Rather, he delivered what felt like a capitulation with the heart part 6. The most recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast had a discussion of the beef and an admission of how much Joe enjoys Not Like Us. He even made fun of Ish, who seems to be supporting Drake, by using the song. 
Ish remained sitting on the couch next to Ice, but everyone else got up and started dancing as soon as Joe turned on the song. It was an amusing moment that proves Kendrick may have the greatest song of them all. Some claim that Not Like Us is a part of Family Matters, but it's really getting people out of their chairs. It only proves that Kendrick is a hit maker, despite the false accusations of others that his songs are uninteresting. Did you realize niggas <laughs> is mad because our opinion on the beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar? After hearing the criticism of Cameron and Mace's rendition of Kendrick Lamar's Euphoria, the artists are now confronting the issue head on. <laughs> Why we can't have our opinion? <laughs> the much-awaited Euphoria, Kendrick Lamar's reaction to Drake, was eventually released earlier this week. The diss track has now elicited strong responses from both sides of the argument, as was to be expected. Secondly, this is what I want to say. According to Cameron and Mace, Drizzy has emerged as the winner thus far. It appears, though, that many of their viewers don't agree. And this is not the start of problem with anybody. In the most recent episode of the Key Podcast, which was released on Thursday, May 2nd, the rappers turned podcasters informed their listeners that their grievances were unfounded. East Coast niggas is not as big on the coast shit as y'all are on the coast shit. Cameron said to his co-host, Listening to Euphoria today. How you felt about that? <laughs> Overall, the song is highly critical, implying that Drake may have erred in his decision to become involved in the dispute. Six minutes in length and packed with bars, Lamar's song dissected Drake's whole career. In the song, Drake receives criticism for being a scam artist. It also touched on Drizzy's choice to stay out of the spotlight when Pusha T was around. All things considered, it's a harsh song, and many now claim that Kendrick is winning the feud. Mace and Cameron seem to have different ways of thinking. Cameron and Mace talked about Kendrick's latest diss tune on their podcast, It Is What It Is. Who's winning the battle to you right now? Drake is definitely winning. Mace claimed that Kendrick was responding too slowly, while the two rappers who are now podcast hosts still believe that Drake is winning their feud. In the last two and a half weeks, Drake released two diss singles. He got into trouble with Tupac Shakur's estate because he used artificial intelligence to mimic the late rapper's voice. Drake has been sharing pictures on Instagram and participating in online games. Fans have been waiting for Kendrick to respond all this time. Mace felt the song was good, but it ought to have been released sooner. It, it took a while for him to get, you wait a while, it gotta be, like, out of this world. When Cameron asks Mace about his overall impressions of the record, he responds that he felt it was alright. Mace also believed that the record would have been more successful and should have been released sooner. I think Drake is winning. Euphoria didn't really, really move me. Jokingly, Cameron questioned why Kendrick needed to answer right away after Mace had taken so long to release his Cameron diss track Oracle earlier. Mace had to gather himself after the two rappers seemed to take a good jab. In the end, Mace claims that the diss didn't reveal anything novel about Drake, suggesting that most of the information heard on the song has already been covered. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.